Hi, this is questions 51 through 53 of the New York State June 2015 Chem Regents exam. Take a moment to pause the video and try to answer the questions for yourself. This is the start of part B-2 of the Regents exam where there's no more multiple choice. You have to write the answers on the answer booklet. Make sure you refer to the reference tables. Use a calculator. Don't try any of this without a calculator. Again, stop the video now. Try to answer the three questions and then come back for the explanation. Okay, welcome back. Question 51. Notice you're looking at HCl and NaOH. If you don't recognize these first as HCl as an acid and NaOH as a base, there is a reference table. Reference table K, there's HCl, and reference table L, NaOH. When I have an acid versus a base, if I go back to the question for a minute, look at the information that's given. I have an acid versus a base. For HCl, I want to know the volume, so I'm looking for volume. I have a concentration of 2 0.00 molar. For the base, I have a volume of 20 milliliters and a concentration of 1.00 molar. Make sure you refer to reference table T and I'm looking for an equation that will fit and the one that will fit is the titration equation. Okay, molarity of an acid times the volume of the acid is equal to a molarity of the base times the volume of the base. If I go back, molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid is equal to the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. Now I just have to plug it in. So I have 2 molar. I'm looking for V on this side. I have 1 molar and 20 mils. So 1 times 20 is 20. That's equal to V2 or 2V. We divide both sides by 2. The volume then has to be 10.0 milliliters. Okay? So the answer, as a matter of fact, for question 51 is 10.0 milliliters and you didn't have to write significant figures. Question 52. Determine the mass of potassium nitrate that dissolves in 100 grams of water at 40 degrees to produce a saturated solution. You have to recognize this. Now you first might go to table T and look for a calculation, but you're not going to find anything. Instead, what you're looking at, you need to find the solubility curves. So if you didn't realize that at the beginning, take a look at that now. So if I go back to the question, it says, determine the mass of KNO3 that dissolves in 100 grams of water. There's my 100 grams of water, okay, at 40 degrees Celsius. So let me use red here. We're going to focus our attention on KNO3. I'm at 40 degrees, and I want to go up to the line, and then I want to go over. Okay, I ignore all the other lines because all I'm looking at is the potassium nitrate. I take a look, and it looks to me that the answer is maybe, I don't know, 63, 64. So that would be what I would put for the answer for 52. And as it turns out, they would give you credit from 62 grams to 66 grams. Finally, for 53... Let me erase this so we have some room. It says, state in terms of molecular polarity why ethanol is soluble in water. Now, you might not remember ethanol, but hopefully you know that water, not only water has polar bonds inside of the molecule, water is a polar molecule. And what happens is when polar molecules want to dissolve other polar molecules. So that must mean that ethanol and water are similar in polarity, or they're both polar. So if you write something like that, that ethanol and water are polar, 
or on the answer key it says both ethanol molecules and water molecules are polar or water molecules and eth ethanol molecules have similar, similar polarity you'll get credit there. This is New York Chem Coach please click the like button or the thumbs up button on the bottom of the video and check out www.NewYorkChemCoach.com